Well, good morning. How's everybody this fine, wonderful, lovely morning? Yes, it is. I'm not being facetious or trying to joke about it. It is fine, wonderful, lovely morning. It's hot, I'm getting humid, but it's still fine, lovely morning. Ah. Oh. When we get off here, I'm going to do a little yard work. Good afternoon. Morning. Morning. 3.37 in the Lloyd book. Ten eighty five in BB. Four four seven in Durand Lester. morning uh gadsby it's um oh it's a newton and it's not in gadsby We're going to sing it out of B.B. because B.B.'s got eight verses. So does Duran Lester. Lloyd only has seven. If you're going to sing something seven verses, you might as well sing eight. <laughs> uh. Sweet was the time when I first felt the Savior's pardoning blood. Applied to cleanse my soul from guilt and bring me home to God. Soon as the morn the light revealed, his praises tuned my tongue. And when the evening shades prevailed, his love was all my song. In vain the tempter spread his wiles, the world no more could charm. 
I lived upon my Savior's smiles and leaned upon his arm. In prayer, my soul drew near the Lord and saw his glory shine. And when I read his holy word, I called each promise mine. Then to his saints I often spoke of what his love had done. But now my heart is almost broke, for all my joys are gone. Now when the evening shade prevails, my soul in darkness mourns. And when the morn the light reveals, no light to me returns. My prayers are now a chattering noise, for Jesus hides his face. I read. The promise meets my eyes, but will not reach my case. Now Satan threatens to prevail and make my soul his prey. Yet, Lord, thy mercies cannot fail. Oh, come without delay. Man, ain't that beautiful. Ain't that just beautiful. Sweet was the time when I first felt the Savior's pardoning blood applied to cleanse my soul from guilt and bring me home to God. Soothe as the morn the light revealed, his praises tuned my tongue. And when the evening shades prevailed, his love was all my song. In vain the tempter spread his wiles, the world no more could charm. I lived upon my Savior's smiles and leaned upon his arm. In prayer my soul drew near the Lord and saw his glory shine. And when I read his holy word, I called each promised man. Then to his saints I often spoke of what his love had done. But now my heart is almost broke, for all my joys are gone. Now when the evening shade prevails, my soul in darkness mourns. And when the morn the light reveals, no light to me returns. My prayers are now a chattering noise, for Jesus hides his face. I read the promise meets my eyes, but will not reach my case. Now Satan threatens to prevail and make my soul is free. Yet, yeah, Lord, thy mercies cannot fail, for oh, come without delay. 
Isn't that a beautiful thought? Morning. Isn't that a beautiful thought and expressed so wonderfully? How that many times when we have particularly experienced a lifting up that now as soon after that excuse me we have a downturn We go from a time which we thought we could never doubt again to a time where we think we can never truly believe again. I've been there and I'll bet y'all have too. For those of you that have asked about my dad's condition, well, they determined he didn't really have an infection. It was a false positive. The doctor was asked him a series of questions and that he answered them all right. So because of that, he's put him in a, a rehab facility for a week to 10 days to try and get some strength back in his legs so that my mother will have an easier time with him, getting him around. Maybe he won't fall so much. He's not falling a lot, but even though he doesn't weigh anything hardly anymore, her mom doesn't either, and she has a hard time getting him up because he's very little help to her as far as trying to raise himself. Although he did do it once. He did raise himself up once. So, you know, a lot of times if a person can't do, can't get the help they think they ought to have, they'll, they'll try harder. Kind of like an Armenian religionist, huh? Thinks he's got the will and the power to do something, so he'll just try to believe harder. You know, that's what they'd tell Newton in that hymn. And he'd say, oh, man, my, my door's clean gone. I mean, everything I thought was so wonderful is now so, it's just not for me. I can't feel it. It's not there. they say, well, you just need to try harder. Just need to work more. You need to get yourself established better. Don't quit. Don't give up. Work for the night's coming. I apologize for being a little late this morning. Two things influenced that. One was uh, had to pay the city bill. So I get tired of going down to their little office, which is clean across town. And so I saw where they now had online payments that didn't charge a premium. So I proceeded to sign up. And pay my bill since it's due today. But... Then as I was getting ready to turn on the Facebook feed, I noticed a couple of things. Post about a church meeting that the Governor, can't remember what it's North Carolina or Virginia, had said, okay, churches, we're going to let you all meet, but 50 people or 50% of your building, whatever's smaller, that's all you can have. Mass social distancing and all that stuff. And I had to respond. I said, I don't want to make anybody mad. 
and this isn't to offend anyone. But I ain't wearing a mask to meetings. I said something to this effect. I was told several years ago, uh, someone who had never seen me in the flesh, just had read things I'd written in the remnant and uh, heard tapes with me on it and things of that nature. And they finally saw me. And of course, I dressed like I normally did. I had on a western shirt. And I think I did have on a pair of, of uh, slacks, khakis, or I think I had on a pair of khaki slacks. Big old belt with big old buckle and a pair of cowboy boots, of course. They took one look at me and they said, I thought it was Jesse James. And I said, uh, in this post, I said, I've been called Jesse James, but it wasn't because I wore a mask. <laughs> and I don't see no use of robbing, of uh, wearing one now. And I said, I can't hug my brother's neck from six feet away. So any of y'all had a meeting where I'm at and don't want to be hugged, just tell me. And I won't. I won't be offended, but it's time we stop obeying Caesar when he's trying to get us to render things to him that aren't his to command. First Amendment of our Constitution says Congress shall make no law. For the establishment of a religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Every one of them governors that shut down churches. Violated the Constitution. Morning. Excuse me. Everyone up. And I made some other remark in there to the effect that our old forefathers in the faith would have snuck around, done something in order to meet together, regardless of what the decrees of the secular state was. And yes, I think we've been wrong. I think if you shut your meeting down, and I think I was wrong. The only excuse I've got is we're all so far away. Travel was the problem to get to the meeting house. But Lord willing, we're going to meet second Sunday. And Lord willing, I'm going down to Cascade, Virginia, fourth Sunday, fourth weekend, for their three days meeting. Coronavirus or no coronavirus. It's time, brethren, that we stop putting up with this. That we pray to God to protect us. It's not up to the state to protect us from ourselves. I know I can't see your hands. How many of you supported seatbelt laws when they come up? How many of you supported motorcycle mandatory helmet laws when they came up? Well, that's just common sense. I don't care what you call it. Yes, were I to ride a motorcycle, I would probably wear a helmet. At least most of the time, I would wear a helmet. But that doesn't mean I got the right to tell Joe down the street he's got to wear a helmet. 
You see, what we have done is we have gradually given government control of our lives, saying, well, I ain't no motorcycle rider. You know, they those those crazy fools out there, if they, they need to be protected. Hey, they, no, no, they don't. They know what's best for them. I know what's best for me, and you know what's best for you. If you don't want to wear a seatbelt, don't wear one. Elder Poole said the worst wreck he was ever in, if he'd been wearing a seatbelt, he'd been dead. As it was, it threw him out of the car on the first roll. Back in the days when there wasn't no air conditioning, so the windows were down. You don't know how skinny he was. I think he was even skinnier then. But anyway, is that enough rant on this? We've given them control. They took just little things. People said, well, you got to do that. Well, yeah, you need to wear a seatbelt. Well, you may need to, but you don't have the right to tell me i got to wear a seatbelt. I don't have the right to tell you not to wear one. If you want one, wear it. I grew up in the car without a car seat. I wouldn't, According to my parents, I wouldn't stay in the car seat when I was little. I wanted to look out that window. I wanted to see what was going on. I was curious. I was, well, yeah, I was definitely a curious child, but I mean, I had a curiosity about me. <laughs> and I, that made it just fine. And how many times have I stood up in the back end of a pickup truck going down the road? Or not going down the road, going over the fields. How many times have I sit there? We could stand up on the dirt roads, but we, could, we had to sit down when it got to the to the hard roads, to the paved roads. Nowadays, you got to have a an eight year old child in a car seat. Give me a break. Yeah, I've paid them fines before for not wearing a seatbelt. Worst one was a city of Salisbury police officer. Stopped me for not wearing a seatbelt. I had my three dogs in there, maybe four, no, just three. And my three dogs in the car with me, fussing and messing with them, and I forgot to put it on and was trying to when he pulled me over. He gave me a ticket anyway. Oh, I was hot. I want to call him everything but a red-headed woman. But anyway, what I'm getting at is we let them have a small portion of our freedom because we're told it's for the greater good. Anything that's for the greater good is to take away your freedom. Remember that. I don't care what it is. And I don't care whether it's a Republican or a Democrat that's touting it a Libertarian, or a Green Party. Doesn't matter. We need to stand firm under the banner that Christ has given us. That banner that is love under which he has placed us. 
and not care what men or devils think of it. I told the preacher we hadn't been meeting. And I asked him, I said, how about y'all? Have y'all been meeting? He just chuckled and said, yeah, we sure have. But didn't pay any attention to any lockdowns. They met. They probably didn't practice social distancing either. But I didn't push that issue. That's right. Give us the courage to stand for the truth. You may think I'm just looking for an excuse to cuss, but no. To hell with everything that stands in opposition to the truth as it is in Jesus whether it goes under the guise of religion, government, or what. Are you ready? You want me to get real hard with it? Even earthly friendships. Well, that's a hard one for me because I don't have a lot of friends outside the circle of the churches. Got a few in the musical world. It's kind of what Peter said, wasn't it, when he told them, your money perish with you. I don't know, brethren. I have a text. Romans 16, 17. You read 16, he says this. Greet one another with the holy kiss, with the holy kiss. The assemblies of Christ greet you. But I appeal to you, brothers. I appeal to you, brothers. Watch the ones watch the ones making discords. And the obstacles by the teaching which you learn and turn aside from them. I read that from the Greek New Testament. In our common version, it's a little little plainer. I want you to see that our common version 
actually gives pretty reasonable translation of that. I beseech you, brethren, I appeal to you. Mark them. It says watch. Watch them. Who? Them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the teaching, to the doctrine which ye have learned. Turn away from them. Turn aside from them. Avoid them. Mark them. Avoid them. Turn aside from them. However you want to say it. What got me is not that part. It's what our standard is to judge it. Contrary to the doctrine or teaching which you learned. Are you a learner? Sometimes I don't think I am. There's a song in the Sacred Heart book, I am a little scholar, lately gone to school. Is that Lloyd? I think it was in Lloyd. I don't believe it's in BB either. Nope. I am a little scholar. You know what? I could pan this thing around. Y'all see some of the some of the books in here. Far from all of them. Here on the right, it's all Greek, Old Testament, New Testament, references, lexicons, grammars, specialty books. Newell's Idiom book, Trenches Synonyms. Karl Barth, Histories, Anabaptist, Theology, Gill, Ames, Calvin, that's not the learning I'm talking about. I used to have a lot of cassette tapes. Elder Poole, others, Elder Wallace down there in Texas, UB Wallace, Elder Morris, Elder Hudson, Elder Lambert, Elder Griffins, Elder Wood. That's not the learning I'm talking about. This learning that comes from these books feeds the head.
Many times the learning that we get from listening to sermons, having what? Scripture discussions and things like that, many times that just feeds the head. But when Jesus come and instructs us, then our heart is filled with truth. Y'all believe that? I bet you do. Think with me for just a moment back in the Old Testament. In Deuteronomy, when Moses is talking to the children of Israel there, and he says what? He found Jacob where? In the waste howling wilderness in a desert land. A waste howling wilderness and a desert land. You know, that's pretty poetic language. The hymn writer talked about it. Dark and thorny is the desert through which pilgrims make their way. It's not a pleasant place to be in the wilderness. The desert may be beautiful to some of us then yes I think the desert's a beautiful place I'd love to go back to Death Valley because I thought it was beautiful I could live at Scotty's Castle absolutely Maybe that's what we all do. Buy Death Valley Scotty's Castle from the state of California. I think that's who owns it. Buy Scotty's Castle and all the land and outbuildings that goes with it. We'll set us up our little compound there. Well, ain't I stupid talking like that? But that'd be a great place, in my opinion, out in the desert. But that's where old Jacob was wandering around, wasn't it? He said he found it. Jacob didn't find him. He found Jacob. And he found him because he's looking for him. And he wasn't looking for him because he didn't know where it was. He was looking for him because he was a sheep. He didn't find him to make him a sheep. He found him in the wilderness because he was a sheep. And he was going to bring him back to himself. So what did he do? Well, I'll tell you what he did now. Let, let's just go out here and listen to uh, Kenneth Copeland and Joe Lostein and some of these preachers. Um, I can't think of all of them now. Why, yes. Yes. Get out of that desert. You don't need to be in the wilderness. You need to be in the mansion up here on the mountain. Isn't that what they'd tell us? Y'all send me $10,000 and the Lord would bless you with a $100,000 house. Y'all send me $5,000. Lord will bless you with a $20,000 car. Isn't that what they tell us? Send me a thousand dollars. Lord will bless you with a five thousand dollar boat. Ain't none of those things a blessing. They all can be a blessing, but they certainly don't have to be, do they? No. He led him about. Doesn't say he ever took him out of the desert. He left him there. But the Lord's presence was with him, leading him in a way that Jacob knew that his God was with him and that he had not taken his presence from him. But what else did he do? 
He kept him as the apple of his eye, didn't he? Wait a minute, you left something out. Yes, I did, didn't I? He led him about. He instructed him. Now that's the lesson that you need to learn. That's the doctrine, the teaching that's under consideration here in the 16th of Romans. Not from men, but the teaching that comes directly from God. It may be through the word. It may be through the uh, listening. It may be through reading. Or it may be God just putting it on you. Do you believe that? Do you believe God could just lay a thought on you? You better, because he can. He's omnipotent. He can do what he wants to. He has the power to accomplish anything his mind desires, anything his heart desires, that he does. He doesn't need your permission nor mine. He doesn't. And yet we're instructed by him. It's his teaching that he's talking about. The doctrine that you have learned. The teaching that you have learned. Too many people would say Mark them that cause offenses, divisions. Contrary to the Philadelphia Confession of Faith. Contrary to the Second London Confession. Contrary to the Articles of Faith in the back of the Association Minute. And so they make somebody an offender or a word sometimes. There's a difference between disagreeing in love and in causing division and offense. I disagree with my brother and on some things. I ain't going to tell you what they are. I'm not. If it comes up in conversation between us, I'll we'll talk about it then. I don't even like to dwell on things we disagree on. Somebody might disagree with my political stand I just took this morning, which isn't really a political stand, I don't believe. It's a biblical stand. But somebody might disagree with that. I don't know. But if you do disagree with me in love, don't disagree with me in malice unless you think I'm not your brother. Then mark me and avoid me. Then mark me and turn aside from me. Yes, you can do that. Now, brother, let's be blunt a little bit here. I'm not one of those people that thinks everybody in the world ought to like me. In fact, just the opposite. I know a lot of people probably will not like me. 
And that's okay. Somebody asked me one time, can you work with people you don't like? I said, I do it every day. I don't have to like you to get along with you. I don't. I love my brother. And most of the time I like them. But even they can do some things sometimes that make me just so mad. I mean, seriously, <laughs> makes me so bad. I just want to, uh, I just want to slap them. But I love them. And I ain't going to stop calling them brother or sister. Because Brother Bob over here on the other, on the Facebook side says we brothers have the same father. Well, they don't have to. They could have the same mother. In this instance, we have both the same father and the same mother because we're full brother, brothers. Uh, God is our father, and the Jerusalem, which is above, which is free, is the mother of us all. That makes us brothers and sisters. Well, I'm honored to have you as a brother. I'm honored to have all of you as brothers and sisters. I am. Knowing I'm not worthy. Knowing that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Knowing that as much as some of my brethren I'd like to smack sometimes, y'all probably want to smack me too. And that's all right. That's all right. Just Aldous Davis looked at me one time and said, you know, Sometimes I I just want to pinch Jim Poole's head off. And then she said Elder Poole gets in the stand and it's just wonderful. She was able to differentiate between the flesh and the spirit. She saw the difference, didn't she? She knew that after the flesh, Elder Poole was just a man like the rest of us. Right? So am I. So is every other ordained minister. Let me give you a little bit of my opinion on this text. When you hear something from one you consider a brother, me or anyone else now, seems like it's contrary to the doctrine that you have learned Learn from God, not from men. What do you do? Why, you cut them off and anybody that'll fellowship them, you cut them off too. No. First things first. Go to that brother. And say, now, brother, I may have misunderstood you, but 
Here's what I understood you to say. Is that what you meant? If it is, let's talk about it. And I guarantee you, if the person to whom you're speaking is one that you've had confidence in, as a brother in the Lord, taught the truth, He'll sit down and they'll talk with you and you'll come to an understanding even if it's to agree peaceably to disagree if it's not something major like denying predestination or saying that election is based on what God saw in the beginning. After Adam sinned, he looked ahead and had to choose him some people, baloney. Then... If it's not got to do with God giving man free will, if it's not got to do with God going back to the natural after having spiritual, contrary to the word that says first comes the natural, then the spiritual, You can agree to disagree in love. But... You don't mark them and avoid them. You don't watch them. You understand that there's room for some differences. What did Paul say that we all come to unity in the faith? I'm going to say this. Y'all may think it's wrong, but I'm going to say it anyway. As long as we got the flesh with us, I don't believe we're going to come to absolute unity in the faith. Because the mind of Christ knows absolutely the truth knows the faith from beginning to end, knows the doctrine from start to finish, kiver to kiver. That's why you see so much unity in the false churches. Huh? Look at the Episcopals. Look at the Methodist. Well, you can be anything and be an Episcopal or Methodist. You don't have to believe anything. They'll take you. I'm going to say it's going to be hard. Stop up years if you don't want to hear it. They don't have that new man because they're not born from above. They're not children of grace. They're not children of God. Therefore, they can unite on a fleshly interpretation of the word and everybody's in unity because all they got is the flesh and anybody that's spiritual, that has spiritual nature, has got to get out of there because it's a part of Babylon. I've said it at least a couple of times. I'm going to say it again. Everything outside of the church of Jesus Christ is Babylon.
I'm going hush here. Were I in a pulpit, I would say I'm going to sit down, but I'm already seated. So I can't do that. Questions, comments? Oh, well, one of the things I meant to say at the beginning, when I was talking about why I was late, then I saw a post under there uh, from someone who, man, I'll tell you what, talked to a few times before I come to West Virginia, once or twice afterwards, and, and then clean out of the blue after at least five to seven years I get a phone call from him last year and I'm pretty sure it's the same person and I want him to know I kept his phone number and I think I'm gonna call him tomorrow or tonight <sighs> he's a fine brother Nothing, brethren? Goodness. All right. Let's bow together. Heavenly Father, we pray that thou would continue teaching us. Thou would give us what's necessary to know, to love thee more, to rejoice in thy full and free salvation. It's all in Jesus Christ that we might have the blessing of his presence with us, that his love would be the banner over us, and that his hand would be over ours as he leads us down the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake, not for our glory. Let us never do anything to be seen of men. Lord, go with us. Teach us, we pray, that we might learn thy doctrine, thy teaching. Hold fast to it. Have it keep us. For it's in the way everlasting. In the name of the way everlasting, we ask. Amen. All right, brethren. Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Regular time. I thank you for your comments. I thank you for your kind attention. And Lord willing, we'll see you.